Let's talk about Unit 5, Multi-View Drawings. Multi-View Drawings are created using a technique called orthographic projection. Orthographic projection is simply projecting the points of a three-dimensional shape onto a two-dimensional plane. When we do orthographic projection, we have six principal planes. These six principal planes are analogous to a cube. So we're going to have front, top, right, left, back, and bottom. Okay, We're not going to use every kind of view for every part. Most parts only need one, two, or three views. The most common setup is something called the three primary views. Front, top, and right. So this is the front of the part, top of the part, and the right of the part. So if we have something like this cube, we would show this be the front view, this would be the top view, and this would be our right view on paper. And I'll show you how to do that practically in a little bit. Computer systems allow you to do this a lot faster than before. Before computers, you had to do this all by hand and by visualization. Now, with computers, you can use the primitives that we talked about before to create the 3D object and then have the computer do the orthographic projections for you. The trick is that you have to tell the computer which projections you need. So do you need front and top, front and right? Do you need some other combination? An important thing with views, so your front, top, or right view, is that they always need to have some information that goes with the drawing. So they need to have a dimension or a note. A view with no information on it is extra information and should not be on a drawing. Some simple parts only need one view, so something like a cylinder can have the diameter shown on the front view, so it doesn't need another view. Although, if the cylinder has, say, a hole through it, it should really have two views so that you can show that. When we're dealing with the three primary views, there are certain dimensions that we talk about to make life a little bit easier. The height of the object is the vertical direction and is only shown on the front and the right view. The width is the width of the object left and right and is only shown on the front and the top view. The depth of the part is only shown on the right view and the top view. So you're always going to need a combination of views to get all three of the primary dimensions. Some parts that are simple, like a plate, will have the front view and a note that indicates the thickness. This is common for things like sheet metal or glass. There are three orientation possibilities for a part to the projection plane. So let's talk about this block and we'll discuss this bottom surface. This bottom surface can be parallel to the plane, which we'll call right here. It could be perpendicular to the plane, or it could be inclined. It'll change the way we draw it. If it's parallel to the plane, we'll draw this whole part outline. If it's perpendicular, this whole surface will just show up as a line on the drawing. And if it's at an angle, You'll still get a full part outline, but it's going to be smaller. The height will be smaller. It's called foreshortening. With those come the three projection possibilities. So just like we talked about, you can show an edge, a true size and shape, or a foreshortened shape. You should never dimension to a foreshortened shape. So with this part, this chamfer right here, you should never dimension it with this view because you can't see the full chamfer. There are two different systems of projection out there. There's something called first angle and third angle projection. It's usually indicated on the face of a drawing. For this class, we're only going to use 
third angle projection. It's what we use in the United States and a few other places in the world that use our drawings. First angle projection is popular in Europe and other places in the world. It's easier to learn third angle really well and then learn first angle than try to learn them both at the same time. So let's take a look at how this is going to work. I have a clear box with five sides. Not going to worry about the bottom view. We're just going to focus on our three standard views, front, top, and right. So we're focused on our front view right now. We have a part in the box. Go ahead and disregard the paper. I just needed something to lift it up. So when we draw this shape, we're going to follow the outline of the part, the visible part outline. We're going to end up with something pretty close to our shape. Now, where it gets tricky is this chamfer over here, I know it's tricky to see, gets shown as a solid line. That's the only way to show it in projection. Another trick, the holes that go through that part can be shown with hidden lines. Right? So that's the front view of our part. Now let's move to the top view. This is as close as I can get to the top view, but I'll go ahead and draw. We're going to take the visible part outline. We get the chamfer in this view, and we go ahead and trace out those two holes. And this ledge right here becomes a solid line. So this top view gives us information about that chamfer that we did not get from the front view. So we need at least these two to describe the part. Now we can go ahead and move to the right view. So in the right view, we can only see the smaller section of the part, and we'll do the same thing. I'll trace out the outline of the part. We can see that line, and then this line from the chamfer will come out here. And if we wanted to, we can do hidden lines for the holes that go through the part. To make this on a drawing, we've got to expand this cube. The way we do it, so let's take this cube. We have our front top and our right view. Front, top, right. To put it onto paper, we'll start with our front view. So it looks something like this. There's the line that projects for our chamfer, but notice we don't have any more information about the chamfer than that. We can show hidden lines for the holes. Right. This is our front view. The top view is like this. Imagine you're unfolding this box. That's exactly how it will show up in projection. So with projection, you could have imaginary lines that line this stuff up, right? That's what it means to project. And uh, the old days when they did this on paper, they would literally draw little dotted lines to help line up the two views. Now we have computers to do it for us. Computers will keep these lined up unless you need to separate them for another view. The next step to get our right view, we're just going to unfold this panel, our right view, and I'll go ahead and draw it. I'll use these projectors to help me out, to line things up a little bit. I know my chamfer is here, and I could 
Uh, chamfer's a little further over here. If you needed to, you can bring these lines all the way out and have a, a diagonal. We're not going to detail too much into this. We'll get to computers before we're really worried about it. But just know that's how it's done. And this is our right view, OK? While we're here, why don't I go ahead and show you how it works on a computer. This is the computer program we use at Hudson Valley in the manufacturing program. It's called SolidWorks. Uh, other 3D CAD programs are similar. So I have the same part I had in the video. That was just a 3D printed version of this. We got three dimensions to work with, so we have length, width, and depth. To put this on a drawing, I'll open our drawing file, right? I'll select my part, and it's going to assume whatever view I drew it on. So in this case, I made the front view the most descriptive about the part, the view with the most information. So I can go ahead and automatically add in a top view, and if you notice, it stays in projection. So I can't move it left or right, only up or down. So I'm going to do a top view. I can do a right view. I could do a bottom view if I needed to, or a left view. There's really no limit to how many views you can have, but we're only going to need two or three for this. After I've got my views, I can move them around, but if you notice, they stay in projection. At this point, I can add dimensions to each view. Right. It gets a little messy, so I'll make my views smaller, a lot easier in a computer than trying to do it by hand. There we go. A little smaller and easier to deal with. If you remember, I mentioned that you don't want to dimension certain things in certain views. This 1.5 plus or minus 10 thousandths is more clear over here because it shows exactly the size of that feature. Whereas in this view, you have to surmise it from this line. So I'm going to go ahead and just move it over here. And it makes it a little bit more clear as to what's going on. And that's just drafting practices, which we'll talk about. At this point, I can move my lines around to make the drawing a little bit easier to read. That's pretty good. I can delete things I don't need, like the scale. And we actually don't have any dimensions on this view. So I can go ahead and get rid of it. We can get all the information we need about this part from these two views. And that is the essentials of how a drawing gets a model gets put on a drawing and dimensioned.